In this episode, we'll be learning about Python's Lambda concepts. Now, the Lambda is an anonymous function or an unbound function. The basic idea is to create a function that you will basically just throw away when you're done using it. You don't want to save a reference to it, or, it's not, or you just it might as well just create a regular function. So let's take a look at our regular function so we know what they look like again, just kind of as a reminder. reminder. So I'm going to have a doubler function, and all this function is going to do is double whatever is passed into it. So there we go. We'll try it out real quick. Pass it 2, doubler returns 4. Now we can create a one function or a lambda uh, very easily. So let's just do that. We'll create a doubler again, but this time we'll set it to a lambda. So use the keyword lambda. And we say we want it in x, which will be the argument that we pass to it. And the return will be x um, times 2. Now you notice that we're assigning this la lambda to doubler, which is what I just told you that we don't want to do. So basically we just created a function the same way that we did up here, but on one line. And because we saved a reference, we're not really using a lambda correctly because it's supposed to be an unbound function and we just bound it to this variable doubler. But you'll see this a lot, so you really do need to know that this is one way to create a lambda, even if it's not really the correct way, or at least not the, not the technically correct way. Let's take a look at a few more examples. All right, so we'll create another one that's just slightly wrong. We create a power lambda. In this case, we have lambda i, where i is the argument that you pass in. And then the colon delineates what will happen next, or the return value will follow with the colon, basically. So in this case, we want to return i star star 2. So basically what this will do is it will take whatever value you pass in and take it to the power of 2. So if we do pow of 2, we'll get 4. And if we do pow of 4, we should get like 16. So, you know, this is setting a lambda, which is kind of silly. If you're going to do it this way, you might, you can actually do a function all on one line. So let's just do that really quick. So you have like def, def pow, i, colon, return i, 2. This is all valid as well. So now we can call this function the same exact way, and you get the same thing. So you really don't even need a lambda, because you can just define your function this way. So let's actually look at where a lambda might actually come in handy. In my opinion, one of the most handy places that I've ever seen it used is inside of a list comprehension. So let's take a list comprehension and actually use it. So we'll create a lambda inside of a list comprehension, like I mentioned earlier. Lambda x and x times 3. This is kind of a contrived example. We need to actually wrap this in parentheses, my bad. All right. So now I have a little function here. And we have i, so 4i in the range of 5. All right, so here we go. Let's see what happens. We run this, and basically what we're doing is we're passing in um, i. So we got 0, 0 times 3 is, of course, 0. 3 times, uh, 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 times 3 is, I mean, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So basically what's going on here is you have the, you're passing the lambda, the i, in each one. And since you're passing with the i by calling this lambda, so this is why we have it in parentheses. So we can call it with the i. This is what we're doing here, we're calling it. i gets passed in as x, basically. And then you have x, then it returns the x times 3. So this is, this is kind of funky looking and kind of weird looking, but this is probably one of the most useful ways that I've ever seen a lambda used. Of course, some people 
we'll actually create the lambda outside of the list comprehension. So you have your lambda like this. Oops. Lambda x, x times 3. All right, so now we have tripler outside of it. So now when we do our, our list comprehension, it looks like this, which is a little bit more readable, I admit, for i in range of 5. So now if we call it, we get the same thing. And you can see a little bit better what's going on, because tripler is calling, being called and tripler is a lambda. And in this case, that's what we were doing up here as well. Now there's actually another way to do this with just pure Python code, and that's to use Python's handy map tool. So let's take a look at that. So I've cleaned up my example so that we can actually look at the map functionality of Python. Let's put our tripler lambda back in here, and then let's run map. Now map takes a function and an iterable, so we'll pass in tripler, which is our function, and then I'm going to pass in an iterable, which is our range. If you try to run this, you'll get a map object. And if you're using Python 2, this would actually return a list, basically. So to get a list in Python 3, we actually have to wrap this in list. So let's try that and see what we get back. If you remember our previous example, the air also returned this. So you can actually use map to do basically the exact same thing that we did using the, the lambda inside of our list comprehension. Or we could just make things really, really simple and just do x times 3 or x in range of 5. And then boom, we have the same thing, and we didn't even need a lambda. So once again, I found that you really don't need a lambda if you're clever with your code, and you can just know what to do with, with a list comprehension. So what else can you use a lambda for? Well, let's take a look. One of my readers from one of my blog suggested that you can use a lambda, lambda from a function call. So basically, you create something like this. So you have an increment or increment function. You pass it and pass it a number, and it's going to return a lambda. Lambda x x plus n. Whoops, I typed this wrong somehow. Let's see. I think that's what we want. So now if we do i increment equals increment 5, for example, then we can call, then we know that i is a function increment, and you notice that it has a lambda in there because it returned a lambda. So i is basically a lambda now. And we can call the lambda like this. So what's going on here? So we first, we called increment, our increment function with a number of 5, and it returns the lambda and keeps that little n in there. So that when we call it with a, when we call the lambda with a 2, it goes and takes 2 plus the 5 that we passed in earlier, and we get 7. So this is like a really cool way to kind of create a function factory almost. And, you know, some people find this really useful. I personally have never found a use for this in my almost 10 years of using Python. But if you do a lot of functional programming or you just like this kind of model, you might find this useful. My personal best use for a lambda is, in, as, is as a callback, especially in like a GUI program such as tkinter, which comes with Python. So that's what we're all going to look at next. All right, so for this example, we're going to have to actually create some code in an actual window. So here's my example. We're going to save it to code. And we'll just call it tk lambda. All right, 
If you're not familiar with tkinter, we'll go over this really quickly. So you import tkinter. Down here, we create a root object. We create an instance of our app class. And then we call the main loop, which starts the event loop for tkinter. In our init, we create a frame. Packing it basically just means that we're putting it into kind of a sizer type thing. We add a button, and here's where the magic happens with our lambda. The button has a command so that when you press it, it does something. So in this case, you want to use a lambda because it's probably the easiest way to create a command for ntkinter for any kind of button event, or really any kind of event in ntkinter. There are other ways to do this, but this is probably the way that you'll see the most, especially in the online examples. So anyway, the command in this case is to call the onPrint function, which is down here, and pass it a parameter. So in this case, we're passing it print, which is kind of dumb because we have num down here. So let's actually change this to like a string or something. Save it again. And let's try writing this code and see what happens. So let's run this. Oops, we're missing something. That's my bad, because I was playing around with this on another Python machine. All right, so let's try this again. Run module. And this is what I get for playing with TK and enter on Python 2. So somewhere around here, I'll have a little window pop up. Here we go. Turn on you somewhere, I just have to find it. Here we go. So this is all that it created. If we press print, it'll say that we printed something. And if we press close, doesn't do anything because we didn't, didn't bind close to anything. So let's just exit and go back to our code. Let's actually print out a string too. So we'll save this, rerun it, try hitting print again. So now we know that it works. Every time we print, it'll pass that print parameter in and it'll print it out. So what I'm talking about is that this is actually passing the string print in as our string and it'll print it out every single time. Not very useful, but that's kind of how you, this is there's one way that you would use it, it to create a callback in tkinter. You can do a lot more powerful things with tkinter, but this is just a good example of how you'd use a lambda. You can actually do uh, callbacks with lambdas and other uh, frameworks like WX Python, and I think I've seen it used in Twisted as well, which is a web uh, kind of a network framework, network event framework. Anyway, at this point, you should know how to use a lambda. You've probably, I've also shown you different ways that other people have used lambdas. And you should just be familiar with how to use them and when to use them. And just know that typically a lambda should be created and basically thrown away. So in this case, it's created and it's not referenced anywhere. It's just kind of saved away as a button command. And that's kind of the proper way to use a lambda. Whereas those other examples that I showed you where it's assigned to a variable is not really the proper way of using a lambda, at least not by its definition. So anyway, now you know how to use a lambda. Have fun with it, or skip it entirely and use something else. It's all up to you. You're the programmer, and you're in charge. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.